Hello everybody. I'm just doing a little bit of some track maintenance here. I have some upcoming events this month. I have a grip event at Circa de Americas and then a drift event at Speed Sports in Houston. So right now my car is on jack stands and I'm just doing a little maintenance here. Uh, these are kind of like just, just some generalized checklists that anyone that is starting to get into tracking or um, before they go into their track event to kind of check for. First thing you want to make sure is you're not leaking any oil or fluids uh, in your car there. Um, I know I had issues in the past where I was leaking oil and I had to cut my session short. And I did little fixes here and there to fix it thinking that was it, but unfortunately that didn't work and ultimately I did remedy the uh, issue and thankfully my last track day, no issues with oil leaks. Next thing you want to make sure is also that your fluids in your car are all fresh and uh, filled up. Uh, for me, I just did an oil change on this car. I do it every two or three track events, mainly just because you know you are putting these cars in high temperature situations, and the oil is designed for that, but not for a very long time. So um, the oil can degrade over time and degrade a lot faster, especially when you put them in uh, high temp situations like at the racetrack. So to avoid any issues, I always just change the oil every two to three track events just to keep it fresh and the motor healthy and happy here. Other fluids like brake fluids, um, I definitely recommend. If you need to change them, just do a uh, high temp brake fluid at, because uh, dot three sometimes on certain tracks you can actually boil them over. Um, Circuit of the Americas is very hard on the brakes, so you can actually boil over your fluid if it's just a regular stock uh, dot three brake fluid um, and then with coolant for me uh, I don't really change it till maybe like every once a year type of deal a uh, coolant usually stays clean for the most part at the track so I don't really have any overheating issues with that as far as like the transmission and the diff I don't change it till once a year for me also um, you know, I know they hit high temps too, but it's mainly the oil that kind of suffers the most here for the heating, so that's why I change it so frequently. And plus, um, I have open ITBs that's not filtered, so it sucks in dirt and what not in there, so the oil gets pretty nasty quickly. Uh, next thing you want to do after you check your fluids is uh, make sure there's no loose bolts there. Um, I had issues here with my suspension here after a track day I noticed that my wheel was very loose it felt like uh, my steering wheel was vibrating a lot and I didn't know what was going on the car was even like wandering like right left sometimes uh, and I was kind of worried about that so as soon as I got home I jacked it up and I found out that this suspension here was loose and so it was these two bolts that was underneath here that was loose and I found out that oh I have to put Loctite on it and it's kind of a new mistake to do but you know I'm not a mechanic or a pro mechanic where I do this for a living so you know you kind of learn as you go and uh, with newer cars you shouldn't have any issues with loose bolts it's just mainly like the older cars and um, or cars that you kind of built from the ground up like this one here too uh, other bolts that I do check are like the bolts for the transmission and motor mounts just because those bolts for the transmission and motor mounts go underneath a lot of vibration and movement too so you don't want those to come loose at an event and you know make you crash so I do check those another thing the next checklist you want to make sure is um, make sure that you have plenty of meat in your tires uh, but these tires they last pretty well I had these same tires on the M3 and since this car is a lot lighter, I definitely have a lot more thread than the M3. I was replacing tires on the M3 every six months. And you want to make sure you have plenty of meat because there are some tracks like, you know, Circuit of the Americas again, where they eat through tires pretty quickly. And you want to make sure that you don't want to cut your session short because your tire, you corded your tire or blew out your tire. Another thing you want to make sure is braking. You want to make sure that you have plenty of meat in your brake pads and rotors too. If you have very little meat in it, it's good to just replace it or just get a spare new set of pads so you can replace at the track. And with the rotors, you just want to make sure that there's no cracking in them or a lip up here too. That kind of signifies that you should probably replace your rotors if you have any of those issues. 
And the other thing I want to check is your wheel bearings. Um, when you track a car a lot, you are putting a lot of pressure and forces on your vehicle. So I also check my wheel bearings here. Like I said, newer cars don't really have that issue where you have to replace them. But with older cars, you definitely are highly recommend on replacing it before you hit the track. And I did that with these with just OEM coil bearings here on the front and rear too. And that's pretty much it. Um, you don't have to do anything else really for track prepping. Those are just a simple checklist, which is um, make sure you're not having any leaks. Make sure that your fluids are clean and fresh. No loose items or loose bolts in your car. And just make sure you have plenty of meat in your tires and brake pads and your rotors look good. And those kind of increases the chances of you not having any mechanical failure or any issues at the track. And you'll just have a good time. So that's what I like to do after uh, or before a track event is just make sure all those are, are good. And, you know, you'll have a good time out there. And hopefully I'll have more track videos coming up also shortly here soon. So stay tuned for that. All right, see ya.